All right, so we just looked at how to do some simple calculations in MATLAB, essentially using MATLAB as a calculator, so to speak. So let's do something a little bit more complicated and interesting. Let's look at some vector calculations. So first of all, what is a vector? A vector is just a row of numbers. So V1, I just have three numbers, numbers one, two, and three, and what we call a row vector. I could also construct this to be a column vector, stack them in a column like that. But all a vector is is just a list of numbers. MATLAB is vectorized in that most of the operations we just talked about, the square root being one of them, will operate on vectors or scalars. So if we do t1 equals the square root of the vector v1, MATLAB will actually take the square root of every single element of the vector v1. So the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 2 is 1.414 dot dot dot, the square root of 3 is 1.73, etc. So MATLAB is actually set up such that when you give many of its functions a vector, it will automatically take the operation on each element of the vector for you. So you don't have to do a for loop and loop over every element of the vector. You can actually just call it one time and be done. You can also put operations within vectors. So here's an example of that. The vector v2 has three entries. It has the entry 1 plus 1, 2 plus 2, and 3 plus 3. So you can actually stack operations inside of the definition of a vector. And I do this sometimes. Sometimes you make very complicated expressions here, and sometimes that's a useful thing to do. You do have to be careful with spaces. If you take a look at this line, this line is slightly different than v2. The difference is this space right here. It looks like we've written 1 plus 1, but MATLAB is going to interpret this as 1 space, the next vector element, then the next vector element, then the next vector element. So be careful with spaces and how you do this type of thing, because MATLAB will interpret the spaces as a space to indicate a vector element. So let's make sure we have all this done. So I'm going to copy that there. So now we have a vector v1, v2, v3. We can do element-wise addition. So given two vectors, v1 and v2, we can add them together, v1, v2. So the sum of those, what you think should happen is 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 4 is 6, 3 plus 6 is 9. And if you perform that math, that's exactly what happens. So MATLAB, when you give the plus operation a vector and a vector, it attempts to do addition on every element of the vectors in an element-wise fashion. You can do something similar with multiplication. So you might think, oh, I should to multiply vectors v1 times v2 to multiply every element. And remember what v1 is, v1 is that, and v2. So if I want to multiply 1 times 2 to get 2, and 2 times 4 to get 8, and 3 times 6 to get 18, you'd think maybe I do something like this. That will actually yell at you. And the reason is MATLAB considers multiply to be a vector multiplication. So if you've taken linear algebra, you appreciate the difference between an element-wise multiplication and a vector or matrix multiplication. If we want to do an element-wise multiplication, meaning 1 times 2 for the first element, 2 times 4 for the second, and 3 times 6 for the third, we put this dot there. So dot always indicates to MATLAB, do the subsequent operation, the subsequent operation in this case is multiply, do it in an element-wise fashion. So now if we do this, we get what we want, 2, 8, and 18. Similar thing for division. You might think, oh, if I want to divide every element of v1 by every element of v2, maybe I just do this. But then that ends up giving you just a scalar number. Again, that's because MATLAB interpreted that as a vector kind of division or inverse. If you want to do element-wise division, you need to do dot slash, and now that will do what you want it to do. 1 divided by 2 is a half, 2 divided by 4 is a half, 3 divided by 6 is a half. So if you see these dots, that's element-wise operation. What about this line right here, V, clear that. V2 and V3 were different sizes, so if I try to do element-wise addition, it's going to yell at me in the Error is actually very informative. It says matrix dimensions must agree. So that tells me you just tried to add two vectors whose dimensions weren't the same. I don't know how to handle that because I don't have anything here to add to the fourth element of V3 because V2 only has three elements. So that'll give you an error. 
back to element wise operations if I want to riot, raise every element of v1 to the cube power again I use the dot to indicate an element wise operation so 1 cubed 2 cubed 3 cubed and then there's some also some other useful commands these aren't operations but they tell us the properties of a vector so the size of v2 tells me the dimensions of v2 1 indicates it has one row and it does it's just a single row of numbers and 3 tells me that it has three columns one two three columns if I change the dimension of v2 make it a column vector now this is going to read as 3 by 1 because now this quantity has three rows 1 2 3 and just a single column so the size command is often very useful numl is also useful numl is just the number of elements and that's the number of elements of v2 there are three of them if I had a longer vector maybe something like that numl of x would be 10 etc if I had a matrix and then 5, and num L of A would be 25. So there's five rows and five columns for 25 different things. So num L is a very useful thing. We can do some more complex matrix operations. Um, if you do know your linear algebra, you know that there's a thing called the dot product. And the dot product between the row vector X and the column vector Y is just a multiply and sum of each element. So the dot product here will be 1 times 4 plus 2 times 5, plus 3 times 6. So x times y, here we'll just do it right here, z equals x times y. Notice we're not doing element wise, we're actually doing a vector multiplication. And this vector multiplication results in the scalar 32, because this is essentially the dot product between two vectors. Next we'll take a look at some matrices, but that wraps up some of the basics on how to define vectors, and the right way to perform vector operations. You know, let MATLAB actually do the vector operation for you. Don't write a for loop and do each thing element-wise. Just take advantage that MATLAB's inherent underlying functions are vectorized themselves.